Welcome to Umonic. I'm Kyle James Jaswinski, and this will give you an understanding of how to use BandLab Studio in the web browser and also give you an overview of music production. Do not despise the days of humble beginnings, so let's get started. When venturing on a quest, it's good to start organized. File management is very important. Saving often, all that good stuff. So let's get started on a good foot. Get on the good foot. This is the BandLab tutorial of awesomeness. I think that's a good title. I might be stretching it a little bit, but at least we know what it is and what the intent of this is <laughs> to help you understand music production using BandLab. Hence, awesomeness. Similar to other software, there'll be a settings menu, which can be accessed up at the top right here in Band. That's the top left. <laughs> you know, undo, redo, zooming the different views, settings, etc. Before we jump into all that, I think if you go down to help, yes, we have the shortcuts. So these are good to know once you get going, but it's good to start here. Space is to play and stop, R is to record, S, slicing the region when you start to chop samples and move things around. So go through these and get familiar with them. A lot of them you'll already know, copy, paste, cut, save, save often like I said, and undo, redo, zoom in, out, I think that's just a, a good place to start, to get organized and comfortable with what's in front of you and what capabilities you have. When you feel ready to make music, you'll probably want a tempo. And up at the top, you can see the tempo is here, and that's simply a click and drag to move it. You can also type it in, and that will adjust the tempo. For the time signature, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, versus one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. There are some limitations. You do have options for that. I'm just gonna leave it in four, four because that is the most common time. Now the key signature can also be selected too. This is something to think about when you're composing or what instrument you're playing can have a lot to do with that. I play the banjo often, so I love playing in G major. And once this is set, any of the new instruments that you ha add to the tracks for the virtual instruments or the sounds, they will adjust to that. So that setting is global for the whole project. That's important to remember when you start to create chord progressions, melodies, add auto-tune, etc. Before we start adding tracks, let me show you some of the BandLab specific things down at the bottom right. They have a tab for your lyrics or your notes. You can click that and then it'll pop up on the right and you can add your notes. Not the most lyrical thing I've typed, <clears throat> but it's helpful. Right next to that button is BandLab Sounds. I'll have an entire video on that. Feel free to start searching for sounds that you love or get you inspired. You can search by packs, loops, one shots, then you can filter those even more by instrument, genre, character, key. Next to that is the MIDI mappings. And this gets a little bit more technical when you're using a MIDI controller. You can customize how that controller interacts with BandLab as far as what buttons do what. Push this button, have it do that, turn this knob, have it do that. MIDI mappings is really fun and I've done a previous video on that. Then the chat. Now this obviously is specific to BandLab because it is web-based. So if you have collaborators or people that are working with you on a track, you can begin to put notes and ideas in your chat. It's as simply as inviting a collaborator and you can do that by their username or their email or copy a link and send it to them. I will not be collaborating with anybody, so we'll close the chat. The lyrics slash notes tab, band lab sounds, MIDI mappings, and chat can all be accessed in the view setting menu as well, and you can see that here. Now let's talk transport control. So if you hit play, it'll play, and then pause, it'll pause. Stop will bring it back to the beginning and play again. Record is self-explanatory, and the one that I think deserves a little attention here is cycle. This can also be accessed up in the tools, and you'll see that there it's now selected and turned on. Cycle is a repetitive way to record or to create loop-based music or focus on a certain section that you're working on. And you can see once I click that button, the red bar above the timeline appears a more prominent red, and you can drag the start and end of that to either be four bars, eight bars, seven bars, whatever it is, and when you play that, it'll just continue to loop that cycle region. And as you can see here, 
it's doing that now. Next to the transport control, you'll see the time code. You can change the display mode for this. If you want beats and measures, it'll count out what beat and bar you're on, or the next one is minutes and seconds. So if you wanna know how long your track is, you can change it to that. If you're focused on more of the arrangement structure and you want certain things to be a certain amount of bars, you can switch between those two and that'll help you in your compositions and in your music production. Before we start adding tracks, there's a few other buttons that I'll show you. This magnet here up at the top right is snap to grid. So when you're moving things around, it'll keep it to the grid that you have and then changing the grid size is accessible up in the settings menu under view, grid size, smart, bar, half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth, and thirty-two. I leave it on smart as you zoom in, which is the buttons that are next to the magnet. You can zoom in and out. That will change depending on how granular you get or if you're looking at it in a more macro scale. When you zoom in and zoom out, the smart grid will adjust accordingly, or if you want it to be set to a certain time division, you can do that as well. I mentioned it before, but undo and redo are over here. Control Z always works. That's right, I did not mention the metronome yet. Next to the BPM, you have the metronome settings, and you can tap this to change the tempo. If you already have something, or just an idea of a tempo that you have, you can also just type it in out here, go back to 88. And then back to the metronome settings, you can change the default sound for it. I don't know why, but cat is an option. Yeah, yeah, someone decided to do that. I'll leave it on the default or maybe the tick. That one's good too. If the metronome is getting too annoying when you're recording, let's say if you're recording vocals or adding in drums and it's interfering with what you're doing. You can change the volume of that, some people I'd slide in that. And then the count in duration, I like to leave it on one bar and that's set by default to one bar, but that gives you a count in before it starts recording. Now before I explain the specific track types in BandLab, just for music production's sake, the main two tracks that you'll ever have are audio tracks or MIDI tracks. And an audio track is simply an audio recording that's put onto the editor and it has an audio region that can be changed and move around and mixed and you can add effects to it, all those things. And then a MIDI track contains digital information that points to pieces of audio. So when you pull up a MIDI instrument, all it really is is a bunch of digital notes telling the computer when to play audio files, whether that be in an instrument or a drum kit. So everything is audio in the end as we listen to it. In BandLab, there's six main track types, three of them being audio, three of them being MIDI. The three audio are voice slash audio, guitar, and bass. The guitar and bass track types are audio tracks. They just have effects or presets that are more effective for their respective track types, either guitar or bass. You gotta find the right tone. The other three are MIDI, virtual instruments, the drum machine, and then the sampler. So let's start with the voice audio track. Now because it is centered around voice, when you open it, you'll see the auto pitch right here and you can turn that on. This will be a separate video. Feel free to experiment with that. But as I mentioned before, when you set the key signature for your track, make sure that you select that for your auto pitch so you have the correct melodic vibes. Next is the effects, and you can add effects simply by clicking on add effects, and there's all different kinds. I'll be going through these in separate videos from the amps and cabs, pedals, delay, distortion, dynamics, modulation, etc., etc. It's a whole world of fun. Effects deserve their own videos. The next thing is the editor. So when you have audio recorded, you're able to change the pitch, the playback speed, and the gain of that. You can also hit reverse. Before recording into an audio track, you need to have an input for it. As you can see, it's detecting the microphone in my computer. If you have an audio face, an audio face, an audio interface plugged in, 
to your computer, you'll be able to select it here. Inputs and outputs are a big part of music production, so it's good to know where your source is coming from and then where it's going to. Moving to the right, you'll see the volume of this track right here, and then also the panning. Panning is left and right to give you a full stereo image. And then on each one, it has a reverb that's separate to the effects, so you can quickly add reverb to it if you desire. And that gives you a good understanding of how the vocal track is laid out and how it's centered around the human voice. Of course, you don't need to use auto pitch if you're just recording in samples or importing other things, it'll be an audio track in its own right. The next are guitar and bass. I'll just add these quickly. And like I said before, these are audio tracks with tools specific to guitar and bass. So they each have a tuner, there it was right there now that we have three audio tracks i'll explain some things that are specific to all of the tracks and then we'll end with the three midi track types for each track you'll see m and s m stands for mute so when you're playing those tracks you can hit m and it will not be heard and s stands for solo so that does the exact opposite if you only want to hear that track to focus in on it solo will do that you do have a volume and a pan slider which is also accessible down at the bottom right like i mentioned before and then there's the three little dots next to it you can rename change the track color enable multi-track recording which allows you to record multiple tracks at once Let's say if you were recording drums or if you were recording vocals and guitar, you record those on separate tracks if you had two different microphones. Multi-track recording allows you to record multiple tracks at once. You can move them up or down as far as organization goes. And then you can add sounds from your computer if you import from disc, duplicate and delete tracks. So just some additional settings there. Moving on to the three MIDI tracks, I'll add the virtual instruments, the drum machine, and the sampler. Now with the drum machine, you can see that it added regions. So when you get into editing, you can start to move things around, and that's where the grid size and some of the other things that we talked about before truly start to become more understandable. Now let's get back to the instrument track. The instrument track is the main MIDI source for virtual instruments, or the main source for all of the virtual instruments when it comes to MIDI musical instrument digital interface on the left you'll see the grand piano which is the default sound but then they're sorted by type drum pads guitars organs percussion synth string voices etc i like this one so resolved under the instrument selection you can choose your midi device that's if you had a piece of hardware plugged in you can use a MIDI controller to play these MIDI sounds. But focused on the interface here, you can see that on the keys, there are also keyboard letters. So you can play the sounds directly from your keyboard. And there's three different ways to change the mode of how this plays. You see the traditional piano layout but if you click mode right here, you can change it to smart keys, which like I said before, once you set the main key signature, which right now I have it in G major for your project, that will be reflected in the smart keys. You can also move this around to change where you are in the octaves, go up and down. And if you want that to go away, you can click map. And these are the smart keys, so it keeps it in key nice and easy then the last one is smart grid so this looks more like a grid controller layout like a launch pad something like that but it also keeps it in key if instead of seeing the pitches you can also see the keys for the keyboard and it can be played directly on your keyboard as well. Just like the audio tracks, you have some editing capabilities in here. You can add effects on the effects tab. And then under the MIDI editor, that's where you can start to add MIDI notes and create your melodies, progressions, etc. 
The next track is The Drum Machine. This is unique to BandLab. It emulates a simple sequencer type drum machine where you can choose the sounds and a simple sequencer is provided where you can highlight those sounds and add them as needed. It's fun. I would recommend using this if you haven't programmed any drums before. The last mini track is The Sampler. This is really exciting because you can start to import your own sounds or you can create your own drum kits using BandLab sounds or if you have drum packs that you've purchased or downloaded, you can use those sounds in BandLab to get the, the style that you're going for. Tons of kits. You can make your own kits. I uh, think this is my daughter making her own vocal chops. <laughs> yep, silly sunny sounds. That one's an exclusive. BandLab has tons of curated kits that they've partnered with other producers. Good, good, good stuff. With all that being said, I think we're at a good place for you to understand what BandLab is capable of doing and also have a general overview of music production itself, but then be curious and excited to start messing around with things yourself, answer some questions. If you have any, put a comment down below if I can help you out with that. That'll propel us into the next videos where we get more specific with audio and MIDI recording and editing, automation, multi-track recording, mastering, adding effects, etc. And lastly, make more music.